So in this video, we're going to discuss the RSS feature. So before we go any further, let me explain what an RSS feed is. It stands for Real Simple Syndica Syndication. And for an example, if you publish a blog, all blogs have an RSS feed. Now, you don't need to be the owner of that blog to have that feed or to display that feed. That's what RSS is for. It's for people, other people, to take the RSS feed so they can re-syndicate that content across to other platforms. And that's how a lot of blog owners get their content out there so that people can read their articles. So if I take an RSS feed that doesn't belong to me, I always enable redirect links back to the original article within my app purely to give that author credit that he deserves or she deserves. Now the issue with this is sometimes you will get a feed that doesn't parse correctly and you can post it into Zapable and what will happen is Zapable won't show the content and then it can be mistaken for a bug when in fact it's a problem with the actual RSS feed. So to test your feed if you visit a site called feedbucket.com, the reference links will be included um, underneath this video, under the reference tab. Just paste in your feed, click and read, and if the content is shown there, then the content will also be displayed within your app. So you can see here, and if we go back to Feedbucket, you can see here, and we'll scroll down, it provides the content. I've enabled a redirect link, so the title, when it's clicked on, will go back to their website in the in-app browser. And you can also see this post can be, can an aggressive dog be rehabilitated, appeared first on, and then it seem, appears to be cut off, but that's because it is cut off. So that's the owner of the blog hasn't had it in his blog title. So when you add, find RSS feeds to add, always test them first in Feedbucket to make sure that they actually display content. And if they do, then you can add them to Zappable. Now you'll notice this also displays images that people have added to their blog post. Some RSS feeds won't display the images. When it can be set up or configured differently. And if you don't have control of that feed and the images don't display, well then unfortunately there's not much that you can do. So let's get another example. We'll take the mobile feed from TechCrunch and we'll place it in. Let's click on save. And then I need to click on update and preview. And then we'll click on RSS. And you can see here, it displays the content. There's one that doesn't have an image attached to the thumbnail, but the rest do. That again is just an RSS feed problem. And then you can see here, the content is displayed. You'll see a read more. So they're only showing a snippet of their content and then they're encouraging the user to read more. So that's how they want to display their RSS feed. When that's clicked on, it will open up the article within the in-app browser. So RSS feeds are a really great way for you to provide up-to-date content, no matter what niche or market or local business sector that you enter into. Find RSS feeds, you can just visit Google. Let me just go back, I'll show you how I find this feed. And you could type in dog training blog, or if you wanted, you could type in dog training blog RSS feeds, and then you'll be able to find um, different RSS feeds. Again, always make sure you test the feeds in Feed Bucket to make sure that they do in fact display properly. Okay, so what could you use RSS for? Well, like I said, pretty much everything whether it be providing latest news and technology from various technology sites, news sites, sports sites, maybe a company that you're building an app for has a blog, then you could 
put their feed in. Maybe a website owner that you're building an app for has a blog and you can put their feed in. Um, with RSS feeds, you can actually get a feed for each category. So if you have a blog owner and they have five different categories in their blog, you can get the feed for each category and then you could add the RSS feature five times and only display that category within that feed. So you'd have five different feeds for five different categories and then it would add to your to the to the content within your blog and it would be well segmented. So with most apps that you build there's an option to add an RSS just to add some more valuable information because if you're in niche marketing then RSS feeds are great because you want your hub your app your app to be a hub of information uh, for the user who installs it you want to provide tremendous value to them so that they keep your app on their phone so make good use of this feature and if you don't own the content I always recommend you enable the redirect link back to the original article to give the author the credit that they deserve for writing the content.